We are live. We are. Seriously. We're on the air right now. This is Nolan Hack and Gal hosting Who's Culture. What's up, Gal? What's up? It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Seems like Monday. But it's, it's like every day this week has been just Monday to me. It's just every day is gone like a Monday. It's just, oh my goodness. I have one more day of work, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long week, and it's been a lot happening this week. Yes. So that's why it's been a long week. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, as always, but more so this week. We have a guest who was a Scientologist for over 30 years. His name is Aaron Smith Levin. Sorry, killing all those black Libyans. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for pu- pushing that crime bill and keeping my friend Kevin Cooper in prison. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. That, the, the, do, do you know the Women's March actually hopped onto that and said, thank you, thank you, thank you, Hillary, for, for being there for all of us. Thank you. I don't have the issue with Hillary that you do. Well, I mean, you're, you're not a, uh, what is it, an emotionally illiterate super predator. Uh, yes. So, I mean, it's, you know, I... I, I don't have. I also don't hold her responsible for what her husband did. Uh, no, her husband, uh, worse from that standpoint, the crime bill, but she pushed that thing pretty dang hard. And I'll, I'll give Biden more uh, blame than her. Yeah. Who, ironically, Obama appointed to be vice president of the United States. Um, but the Democrats control Congress, so everything's fine. So yeah, that's, that's nice. Uh, but the actual good news with the election. Uh, you have two different uh, tr- transgender people uh, becoming uh, one's yeah. a state uh, congressperson. Yeah, and- Virginia. Virginia mm-hmm. elected its first openly transgender state lawmaker yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, Democrat Danica Roam, to the state's House of Delegates. She unseated Virginia Delegate Bob Marshall. Um, who is who introduced the Republicans, I'm sorry, the Virginia's version of the bathroom bill that we saw in North Carolina. That's only one of the wonderful things that he did. Uh, I saw a list today. I, I've tried to stay away from it. I can't even put into words some of the things uh, along the lines of uh, after, don't ask, because he's, he's been elected 13 times. So thirteen was, times. Mm-hmm. He's had thirteen terms. He, after "Don't Ask, Don't Tell," was repealed. He uh, tried to pass um, a ban on homosexuals in the Virginia National Guard. Uh, his quote was something along the lines of, "I don't want to be serving," even though, by the way, he wasn't serving anything uh, in the military. And he said, "I don't want to be serving and have to get mouth to mouth and wonder." If the guy next to me has performed sodomy 14 times in the last week, Uh, that is almost word for word the quote. I'm not going to say it's the exact quote because I saw it this morning, and it's been a long day, but it was along those lines. Um, He is a horrifying bigot who was elected 13 times, but he is not elected anymore. Well, that yeah, that is that is good, and I I said the same thing last night. I hope that God Rome does not run for. Uh, U.S. Congress, because uh, once that happens, it's it's game over. Uh, your, your soul is is in the hands of the lobbyists and uh, big government. So I, I hope he does a whole bunch of damage in Virginia and helps the people of Virginia. And that is uh, great news that she was able to beat such a horrible. <laughs> Horrible human being who won 13 straight terms. And also, Andrea Jenkins, uh, first openly, uh, well, second, well, first openly oh, she's the transgender, first openly, first openly transgender uh, black woman to elected to public office. Uh, in a major city, too. Yeah, uh, Minneapolis. Minneapolis City Council. Uh, it's it's pretty, pretty big news. 
uh, both both uh, accounts. And I would like to say because there's been some misinformation of, as we love giving white people all the credit. Uh, Athea Garrison, uh, who uh, is still alive, she was the first transgendered uh, person uh, to become a member of the, uh, the state Congress. Uh, she was in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Uh, she wasn't openly. I was going to say she wasn't open. Yeah, that's the that's difference. The, yeah, that's the difference with uh, the, this particular election. Uh, so just want to give Athea credit for that and her bravery. But it, it, it was a... There were a bunch of firsts last night also. I mean, you have... Well, there's a second uh, in Virginia as well. You've got Democrat Justin Fairfax selected to become uh, the next lieutenant governor. So he becomes the second African-American to win statewide in Virginia. And then... And I'm, I mean, I'm reading that. Let's see. Sheila Oliver, first black lieutenant governor of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Viv Lyles... Um, first black mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina. Yvonne Spicer uh, was elected the first mayor of the city of Framingham, Massachusetts. Oh, first black mayor. Uh, let's see. That'd be a pretty good feat to be the first mayor of a city, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it says first mayor. That's why I was like. Framing Fra- Framingham residents recently voted. Oh, it is the f- she is the first mayor. Yvonne Spicer was elected the first mayor of the city of Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, Framingham residents recently voted to become a city, relinquishing its status as the largest town in America. This vote, instead of being a town, it's now a city. I see. Uh... <clears throat> this I know it took a minute for me. <laughs> this vote altered the way the government will be run with a mayor and a city council. Okay, that's just reading that one. Um, the largest city in New Hampshire just elected its first woman as mayor, Joyce Craig. Tyler Titus, uh, first openly trans person ever elected in Pennsylvania last night. Uh, Ravinder Bala, the first sheik to be mayor of New Jer- uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, Tyler Titus was the first gen- transgender person elected in Pennsylvania, by the way. Congratulations to Tyler. And uh, a Libyan-American becomes the first mayor of a Montana uh, city. Uh, that That is over in Helena, in the capital. That's, that's pretty, that's something else. Uh, his name is Wilmot Collins. Yeah. Um, next, these, actually. And two Latinas elected to the Virginia House of Delegates. What's up with Virginia, Charlotte? Uh, because Charlottesville. Well, not just that, but uh, f- those that had lost their right to vote due to a felony got their right back, and they actually voted. That helps. That helps. Because it's so gerrymandered. Florida, uh, half of us, half half of black males can't vote in Florida. It's thirty percent in Alabama. That's surprising. It's more well, 50 50 percent. I'm sorry, fifty percent in Alabama. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Jenny Durkin, first lesbian, uh, first Seattle, first mayor, lesbian mayor in Seattle. That'll be interesting. They their police are as bad as anybody's. And not the first woman. Ninety two years ago, there was a woman elected to the Seattle mayor uh, as a Seattle mayor, but the second woman. It's been ninety two years. 92 years. Uh, Melvin Carter. Um, St. Paul. Oh, I think Melvin Carter was... No, that's a different person. Let's see. Made history by electing. First African... Uh, first black mayor in St. Paul, Minnesota. Kathy Tran. Uh, she actually came to the U.S. as a refugee from Vietnam when she was an infant. She becomes sure. the first Asian American woman elected to the Virginia House of Delegates. Janet Diaz, the first Latina member of city council in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Jonathan McCollar, the first black mayor of Statesboro, Georgia. Uh, Brendan Barber, the first black mayor of Georgetown, South Carolina. 
Mary Parham Copeland is the first black woman mayor uh, in Midgefield, Georgia. Booker Gaynor, first uh, first black mayor in Cairo, Georgia. Kathy Murillo, first Latino mayor in Santa Barbara, California. Laura Curran, told you there was a lot of firsts last night. Laura Curran, first female county executive for Nor- New York's Nassau County. Lisa Middleton, first openly transgender person to be elected to a non-judicial office in California as a whole. Mazir Sh- uh, Sali, first Sudanese American to win. Oh no, I'm sorry, to join the Iowa City Council following her win on Tuesday. And I think that's all that I know of. <laughs> that's a lot of first though for one day. That is not bad at all. And I, I think the fact that there is more representation, which we're going to talk about in a different form later on, in politics in the United States for transgendered people, that's huge. Absolutely. And I think it's extra huge that it's on the state level or the city level, which is where ironically you can not so much get the most done but you have a much less chance of getting corrupted um and we have some uh, brothers and sisters straight out of the motherland getting some uh, some seats in different uh, areas of u.s politics so that's nice in montana of all places that's that's got to be an uh, interesting travel uh, interesting set of circumstances to travel from the motherland all the way to montana in the united states i want to read more up on that particular story uh mayor of helena it's a black man go figure um but of course then there's a state level problem and i my my head was has been turning in circles like uh I, i'm not girl in the exorcist losing her mind uh there's been all this celebration that the democrats have taken back congress which is a positive because by comparison that it's just a better situation but how much better and does it matter as much as people are saying and i found a graphic that i tweeted out a few minutes ago for 26 straight years congress was blue it was completely democratic. And that was from about 1955 until 1985. So you had all these things like Leonard Peltier being arrested and not let out of prison, uh, Martin Luther King being killed, Malcolm X being killed, Stokely Carmichael having to flee the country, uh, Ashada Shakur having to flee the country. Um, you had Reaganomics. You had uh, Islam extremism being created by the United States. Reagan, Ronald Reagan, actually hosting uh, Muslim extreme extremist terrorists in the White House in the Oval Office. Uh, so you had all these horrible things that were either allowed by uh, a blue Congress or put through by a blue Congress. Uh, and we have a blue Congress again. And like, as you were saying, granted, a lot of this stuff is state level, which is good. Uh, but in terms of, you know, historic first, we had a black president. He was the only president to personally deny Leonard Peltier's uh, clemency petition. Everyone else has let the clock run out. Uh, you had a black president who decided to let Hillary Clinton go into Libya and completely decimate the country and kill a whole bunch of dark-skinned and, and uh, black people in Africa and Libya. Uh, black president put up child soldiers, uh, soldiers in Sudan. Uh, black president gave more money to the police 
who kill us every day than any president in U.S. history. And he had two attorney generals who were black, one who was a woman. And the police brutality got, ironically, got worse under him. Uh, and it's got, I, I think you could say it's gotten even worse, obviously, under Trump, which is that, that was obvious and you know, that was going to happen. Objectively, it's not. It wasn't, it wasn't worse. It just got brought to the attention of the mainstream. The Wasn't numbers it, have been significantly uh, even over the last 20 years. Wasn't in the last couple of years of his presidency, didn't the numbers go up? No, they did not. The numbers of being reported on media went up, but overall the numbers did not go up. Hmm. Well, I, I, I thank you for correcting me. Though I, I will say that giving a record number of money to the police is certainly made the problem worse in the future and uh, the militarization of the police. And then he kind of cowered and doubled back and said, well, we need to demilitarize the police. And even though he was the one to give the blank checks, um, it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's I, annoying would be one word that I use when I, especially when I see black folks like just clamoring to the democratic party that his, been murdering them since Andrew Jackson helped create it before that. Of course, that was before the Dixie crack crossover. Um, but it's 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 disconcerting. It's it's very it's very troubling that to see all these years after slavery, we're still holding to one party or the other. Which, as I always say, these are not our politics. Uh, this is this isn't what we practiced uh, before colonization, when we were very successful in so many different nations in Africa or native people here in Tur on Turtle Island, and you have our ancestors, uh, name them, Martin, Malcolm, Stokely, saying and and, and telling us 